Thank you for joining me today. I'm the project manager for Dynamic CCTV. My name is Nathan Garner. What we're going to be going through today is the P Star Hick Central storage solution. What I'll do is I'll go through a quick PowerPoint. Don't want to go too much through PowerPoint for everyone. So I will go into more of the web front end and the setup of the P Star storage solution, as well as linking that through into a Hick Central server. And we'll cover a few different bits as well. At the end of the session, I'll do a Q&A session. So if you have any questions, if you put them in the Q&A section, and I'll come on to them at towards the end of this webinar as well. And I will send out all the slides that I go through today as well. A lot of people used the likes of Hikvision MVRs or DVRs for their storage on different sites. But for large systems, there is a need for a centralized storage location or the need a large amount of storage if they need to have a requirement to store the footage for longer periods of time than you normally would on a standard system. So Hick Central is a, the P Store software that's linked through in Hick Central is a centralized Windows server-based system and it's capable of storing large amounts of data through a rated array system for hard drives and it will actually link through into the Hixample software uh, which is the management side of things for the full system. It's generally used as either a main storage location for your cameras or it can be used as a backup solution. So all the cameras would record normally to a Hikvision recorder but you can also have them simultaneously recording to the P-Star storage server as well and with the p-star servers they can have a, a much higher capacity for bandwidth than a normal mvr would just because of the server hardware that it's running on in some cases we can go up to gigabit throughput and higher um, on the systems that we have put together for the solution there's also an option for redundancy so what you can do is you can have them both record into both the NVR and the PSTAR server at the same time. What you can also do is configure it so any footage that's recorded on a recorder during the day can then be uploaded to the PSTAR server on a night or when there's less traffic on the network, which is a better way to handle throughput with regards to large networks where there are high usages during the day. So this is just kind of an overview of the topology of a Hick Central system with a P-Star unit as well. So you can see we've got our Hick Central server in the middle there, which is then connected to the internet or to your local network. And then we've got our P-Star server, which is our storage option that we're going to be looking at today. So this is where we can store any of our footage and also captures as well from any events. And this will link up to TVI recorders, IP NVRs, and also integrate access control and intercoms through the Hicks end of the software. But for recording, it would be the cameras and NVRs and DVRs that would run through the PSTAR system using Hicks Central. And this will also limit the bandwidth that's used on a recorder. So if you have multiple clients that need playback footage, they'd log on to the remote client on their desktop. And instead of streaming the stored video from a recorder, it's coming from the PSTAR server instead, which can then be branched out using stream media servers, which will then just output more bandwidth. So you're not hammering the server or the recorder itself for those. So the actual eStar setup is all done through a web-based user interface, and similar to how you would configure a Hick Central system. That's just an example of the actual homepage for the eStar server, which we're going to take a look at live setup of one on my laptop for this demo here, which we're going to come on to shortly. So that's just displaying on the homepage the storage space that we've got, the capacity and also the percentage of the storage that's available to us and it will also flag up any errors in there as well. So if there's a need for an operator to check on the system, they can just log into the web front end and see that dashboard and see it there in front of them exactly what the service status is of the software itself. But the benefits of the P-Star 
within a system is it's centralizing your storage on a server. So if you have multiple recorders and on different remote sites, you could have a PSTAR server at, for example, head office and have all that footage backing up to the main office. So if there's a failure on one of the recorders on site or there's one that has been stolen, you've still got that footage backed up centrally for the system. You can also have larger storage capacities. So with a single PSTAR server, you can go up to 200 terabytes on a single server. And you can also use distributed PSTAR as well as being able to have up to 64 individual PSTAR servers added into one HIC central system. So you can go from a small amount of storage through PSTAR all the way up into large scale deployments depending on the scenario. Well, this is something that we can help with at Dynamic CCTV. So we can offer full end-to-end -end support on the initial site evaluations. If you send us all the details through, we can look at what would be required or anything like that with the storage as well. With our PSTAR servers, we can also have increased throughput. So with the way that we have them set up at the moment, using our secure logic servers, they have an increased higher throughput over a standard NVR or DVR. So if you have multiple clients that are streaming the cameras in playback, or if you're recording a large amount of cameras, um, we can have higher throughputs for them on the system. PSTAR software will also allow to have multiple users playing back multiple cameras all at the same time due to the way that it will actually handle those streams and we can increase that further as well if there was a need to using stream servers. But for the most part, PSTAR can handle what you can throw at, at the actual software and the hardware service that we've put together. The most popular ones with regards to RAID are RAID 50 and RAID 60 that we set up on our systems when we sell them. But depending on the requirements of the site, we can spec different RAID cards in order to handle that and also work out the storage that would actually be needed in order to incorporate the RAID volumes that you'd need for the system. We can help with that dynamic CCTV. You can also configure multiple storage pools. So this allows you to set a specific storage pool per recorder, and that will then break it up into folders across your storage volume. If you're using RAID, or if you're using multiple hard drives, you can choose independent hard drives to store each recorder on, if that was something that you needed to do for the site as well. Or well, if we had a site where they had multiple remote recorders and they were connecting back to the central location where the PSTAR server is by, uh, say, an internet connection, a leased fiber line, and normally that's linking the two sites together for PC usage or anything like that, what we can do is we can schedule a copy backup to the PSTAR server so it happens at night or in the quiet hours on their network. So that will limit any bandwidth issues or affecting their daily workload, which is a powerful feature through the Xcentral and the PSTAR solution, which is something that we have specced on a few different sites for our customers. We also have within the PSTAR software is what's called video inspection. So this will give us a breakdown of any camera drops at all in minutes and we'll show you the amount of minutes in each hour where there's been loss of footage. So you can see on our serve there, how we're all showing in green. So the video has been normal during every hour on there. If there was an error or there was footage missing, it would display as either a red or orange symbol. And it will also give the time in minutes in the block where the footage was missing for through that system. So it gives you an easy inspection of the actual status of the recording through the PSTAR server itself. When it comes to actually playing back the footage, this would all be done through the HIC Central control clients. And if you're also using an MVR on the site, when you go into the playback section, you'll have two options. So you'll have the main storage, which is the recorder itself. And then you can see there, I had on mine the auxiliary storage option, which is the PSTAR server. So the way I have it configured in our building is our main recorder is set to motion recording, and then our PSTAR server is set to continuous recording. So if anything's missed, we can then switch over to our PSTAR storage and play back that continuously. And also if there's any failures on the actual NPR, we've also got it backed up on our PSTAR server as well. And this also allows multiple people within our company through our central control clients to play back the cameras simultaneously without affecting the actual recorder itself through this system.
So what's needed for a central system using the PSTAR storage solution? We'd need to start off with a Hexcentral server, which can be done using our HC web servers, which I'm going to show on another slide. We then need to have our PSTAR licenses. So these would be done the camera channel for the PSTAR software, which are available from ourselves. And then we'd need the actual hardware storage server in order to run that PSTAR software. This server needs to meet specific requirements. This is down to the actual power of the unit in regards to its CPU and RAM, as well as the level of storage that you need and the RAID and throughputs that are required. But we can assist with that dynamic CCTV and help build a unit that will match your specific requirements on site and bespoke to yourself. Not all PSTAR solutions or hardware servers are the same when it comes to storage, so we can actually build them to meet your requirements through our partner company. So what do we need to consider when choosing our hardware? We need to look into the amount of storage that's needed for the system. We also need to look at the level of RAID that's required for the site, so the level of redundancy that they're needing. We also need to know the total bandwidth the worst case scenario coming into the unit and then that would need to be streamed back out again to control clients and users in order for them to be able to play back the system. We'd also need to know the redundancy levels that are needed, so this would be PSU failures or actual operating system failures. So on our hardware servers that we sell, the actual operating system for Windows and the PSTAR software is across a RAID array. So the actual drives that you use for the operating system are in a RAID configuration. So if one of them fails, you can swap that out and put a new hard drive in and it won't actually affect the operation of the system itself for that. So we do have built-in redundancy for our systems. And if there is a requirement for even more redundancy or more backup PSUs or anything like that, you can always contact us dynamic and we can look into that for you and put together a solution for that kind of system. Also, the level of support that's required for hardware servers. So quite a few manufacturers offer different levels of support packages for the actual servers themselves. We've partnered with a company called SecureLogic and all the servers that we sell come with full hardware support, whether that be a hard drive failure with a hot swappable replacement sent out or whether they need to remote dial in to fix an issue. And also there is the option for on-site um, support if there is a major failure that can't be fixed remotely. There is on-site support on that as well. So these are just a couple of the different hardware options to run a PSOS system. So we've got our Hixcentral, an active Hixcentral server here. So this would be run on one of our HC web servers. So you'd need to use a base license for the Hixcentral itself. So these start at a zero channel base license and go up to a 300 channel base license. And you can also then use single channel add-on licenses to change those and meet the requirements of your site. On a single Hixcentral server, you can go up to 3,000 cameras in one single server itself. And there's also a distributed system that will go up to 10,000 as well through Hixcentral. Once we have our active Hixcentral server, we then need to use our PSTAR licenses. So these will be done per camera channel and this is what the software license is that we'd need in order to be able to record the footage on a server. And you can contact our sales team for pricing on the actual PSTAR licenses. And if you are looking at the hardware side of things from ourselves, you can contact project at dynamic-cctv.com and we can look at putting a solution together for your requirements on the site. So that's the software and the Hixcentral side of things that we'd need. We then need to look at our actual storage servers. We've got a few different builds. We've got a 1U system, a 2U system and a 4U system and these are based off our secure logic servers. Each storage requirement's different, so we'd spec a specific server to meet your storage requirements and your level of RAID for the actual system that you're looking at to use on site. So you can contact us with the needs and requirements and we can put one of these servers together for you and also send a port out and then we can then help you with any support or any issues there as well. And also any pre-sale support we can offer through our systems as well.
But with our PSTAR system and Tick Central, our sales at Dynamic CCTV offer support with storage solution designs. So if you have a requirement come in from a customer and you need any help looking at the storage solution, we can help that in-house through our project team and our sales teams. We will also calculate the storage to account for any losses due to RAID and also drive initialization losses. So the amount of storage that you specifically need, you will have at the end when you've configured your system and it's just the storage that's needed for the cameras. For that, we will take everything into account when we do our calculations. We also put together bespoke server builds for specific solutions. So if you have a specific requirement from a site, or you need a server to do a bit more than what we'd normally look at, we can help put that together for you and we can then advise on what would be needed, if anything would need to be changed, if something wouldn't work quite right or as you'd predict it would, we can help with that. We also now have a dedicated project support team which will look after the project end to end with our BDM team and also our sales team for the full solution. So you have full support from ourselves at Dynamics CCTV with any project work as well. And we can help specify any of the required hardware and software to meet the needs and requirements of each individual site. And we can help you guide you through that process as well. Now we can take a look at the live setup and demo of the actual PSTAR software. So if you bear me two seconds, I will just switch over my screens for this. Share the screen now. So now we should be able to see my PSTAR web front end here for the system there. So I can log into our unit now. I have already activated this system for this demo here. So this is the home page that is for the PSTAR software itself. The first thing that you'd need to do when after the install of the PSTAR server is to actually activate the system using your license key. So that can be done down in the system management page and then in the license section there. And we'd then either do an online activation or an offline activation. But you can see there, my system's already activated with a capacity of up to 200 terabytes and 72 channels of recording, as well as the expiration date for the system there as well. So if I go back into our homepage, what we'd need to do once we've activated the system is to configure our storage, which we can do from the storage management page here. We then need to create a storage space in order for us to store the actual data. So this would be folders either on a RAID array system system volume or on individual disks, depending on how the system is set up. So if I go into this one here and initialize it, so that's now just formatting my volume there, which I'll bring up in a second. It's going to take a minute to format it. But for this demo, I'm just using a USB SSD drive just so I've got a separate drive to my actual operating system. I cannot install it on the C drive for the PC. It's got to be a separate physical drive for the actual storage in order to prevent any overwriting of your operating system on the PC or server that you're running it on. So this will just take a minute to format and should jump up any second. With the PSTAR systems, if you purchase the system from us with the hardware, we can pre-configure this beforehand. So when you get to site, you wouldn't need to set up any of the storage spaces on the actual volume. We can do that before it is sent out to you there. So you can see I've now got my storage set up there as my D drive and it's saving into star data one. If I hadn't already configured that, what you'd see is when you're going to create a new storage volume, you'd see your different drives that aren't mapped to the C drive. So you can see that I've got my D drive and it's got 223 gigabytes of space. I can click on the drop down there. You can see that I've got an old file and then I've got the store data. That's just because it's already added to an existing pool. So I can't add that again. But I can create a new one and select that and enter the amount of storage. So for this one, I can put gigabyte, 
or any other thighs that is required for the system. My other store is configured to 199.88 gig. It is actually formatted to 200 gig, but you just lose that slight bit when you're initializing the actual storage space, which we account for in our storage calculations for the system. Once the storage space is done and you've initialized the unit, you then need to go into resource pool and we then need to create a pool of storage because we could have multiple storage spaces and we can combine them into one storage pool or we can split it up into multiple storage pools. So if I click on add on this page here, I'm just going to give it a name of storage pool for that. And you can see we've got a couple of different options for the overwrite mode. So once the PSTAR server's full, it will then start to overwrite by default, or you can have it to cycle overwrite, so it will cycle through after so many days, or you can have it set to not overwrite at all, so you'd manually need to wipe the footage or tell it to overwrite once it reaches capacity. We then need to enter the capacity that we want set for the actual pool itself. So you can see there we've got our maximum distributable capacity of 179 gig, which I've set this pool to. So again, this is down to the losses when you're configuring the system. So we've gone from 200 gig down to 179 gig. We haven't lost that much storage. What we can also set is the maximum locking up attempts there, uh, which is by default is 10%, which we leave as standard on the system and we can then click on the add button there. And now that's created a storage pool on the PSTAR server that we can then add into our HipCentral control client, which we'll do in a moment. So what I can do now is if I open up client for HipCentral, I'll have to do that on another screen, but it's on a different IP address. And I will just restart my system services. So you can see on my HipCentral control client, on my service manager there, sorry that the services were stopped. So that would prevent me from actually opening the web client. I'm just starting those up now. This is on my local laptop there. Now I'll switch this over and do my web client. So this is the web front end of the Hixample server itself. So within our physical view, we have an option for recording server. So I can then go into add a recording server and I need to put in the IP address of the server that I'm using. So if I just pull up my IP address. So for this one, I'm using my laptop's IP address. And um, this can be an external IP address if it's remote for that. And we then need to set the ports, which for my system here, the set as default. And we then need to use an access key and a secret key. So this is to encrypt the data between the Accenture server and the PSTAR server. And we also then need to set our alias, which is the name of the storage. And then if I just put in the password for my PSTAR server, and I'm just going to go back onto the web client of the PSTAR server to get the access key and the secret key. So if I drop that back off and go into system management and then go into our key management section. So we can download the key for that. So you can see we've got a text string there. So we need to manually copy that, paste that into the web front end of Hixentral for the access key and then we need to do the same for the secret key of the system there. And then go into physical view and go into our recording server again. You can see that our main record is online and added into the system with our access key. And you can see we've got our storage capacity added in. So we're at 22 terabytes and we've got 2.5 terabytes free for the system there. And we've also got the status of each of the cameras that are added into the system. So for this, to configure the actual storage itself, it's all done within the logical view of the system. So once it's added in, if we then go into logical view, 
and if I do it on, for example, our main MVR and search for our front desk, and then go into front desk there, you can see we have an option for our record settings. So our main storage is set to our encoding device, which is the recorder. And I've then enabled the option for auxiliary storage and selected our storage location to be PStore server and set it to use our main record storage pool for the system. And it's set to real-time storage there. And we can also change it over to scheduled copy backup if we wanted to. So I can configure that to backup between specific times every day. So if I set this to 2300 hours between 3 and 11 at night, that would mean that it would then upload all the footage from the recorder up to the PStore server itself. For this one, we're leaving it as real time storage. And you can also set it to run through a stream server. So if you want to distribute it across your network for bandwidth reasons, or any limitations that you have on the network, you can actually set to use a stream server to handle that data as well through there. And then we can save that there for the system. Now on the control client, let's load our panel into now. This takes a couple of seconds to load that. On our control client itself, if we go into monitoring. So this is where we can live view and playback a system. So we've got our live view tab at the top and then we've got a playback option. So if I select playback there, and if I search for front desk, I can then start them back out front desk camera. Now you can see there at the moment that's using motion only recording. So it's got breaks in the bar there and it's in orange on the timeline. What I can actually do is if I click on the filter icon there, I can set to use center auxiliary which is our PStore server and select OK. And you can see there now we've got a continuous timeline of the actual playback and that's pulling it through our PStore server there. Which is good for any backups or if you want to have a limited storage on your remote NVRs but you want to have a centralized system which has all the playback from all the sites on and this is where PStore software becomes useful for it. So that's just a kind of quick overview of the installation setup and the use of the PStore software. What we can do is if you've got any Q&As, I'll just switch over my screens now. And if you want to put any other questions, you can email me any systems that you need me to look at or anything like that into our project inbox and we can get onto those as well. And I'll just pull our Q&A section up now. So I've got a customer that's asked how many users can play back at the same time. So there's no fixed limitation with this. It depends on the throughput of the system and the capacity of the network when using PSTAR. Um, depending on the requirements for the site, we can go up to four gig a second on our hardware servers that we sell from Secure Logic for that one. So depending on the requirements of the site, we can match those for the system. And if there's any other questions there, it's that one. Just had one from Mark Brown come through. The question is, what's the maximum storage? On a single PStore server, it's up to 200 terabytes per an app, a physical unit, where you can have up to 64 of those units per a Hixcentral system. So you can have 64 times 200 terabytes altogether on a full scale large system for that. And I've just had a question come through from Nilesh regarding the cost for them. For that, I'll send over an email to you on that one, Nilesh. Thank you for joining me and taking the time today. If you have any questions or any solution support that you need there, please feel free to contact me at project at dynamic-ctv.com and I'd be happy to help you there. Thank you very much for joining. Cheers. Thank you.